Arts Lail with Lail by Mail. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Epson Creative Print app. There's a couple things I want to point out right off the bat. Uh, number one, I have no affiliation with Epson. This is just um, an overview of how I use uh, the Epson Creative Print app, um, primarily for printing photos in my traveler's notebook. Uh, the other thing that I want to point out is that um, I am showing, um, as, as I'm showing the steps to how to use the app on the video here, I am showing that from my iPhone. Uh, so everything you're looking at will be from an iPhone perspective. The app is also available in the Android store. So I'm assuming that the app uh, works very similarly uh, to what you're seeing here if you do have an Android, Android phone. The last thing that I want to uh, mention, this assumes, uh, this video, that you've already downloaded the Epson Creative Print app and that you have the Epson PictureMate PM400 printer. Um, I have included a link in the description box down below uh, if you are looking to purchase that printer. Uh, that would be an affiliate link, so if you are purchasing that, um, through Amazon, then I will get a small little stipend, uh, and that does not reflect uh, the price that you are paying whatsoever. All right, so now that we have those things out of the way, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so I am accessing the App Store, and once I get to the App Store, I am searching for the Epson Creative Print app. Once I locate that, uh, the icon that you're looking for is the first one, kind of down below that bar of three large icons, the one that says Epson Creative Print. I've already downloaded that, so you see mine says open, uh, but you would go ahead and download that so the app is uh, on your device, and then once you've downloaded that, you will be ready to start printing. I have organized all of my apps that are related to photography in one folder on my iPhone. So I have clicked that photography folder and then I am clicking on that Epson Creative Print app. It will open up the app. I spend most of my time in that collage area. That is where you're printing your photos. Click that collage button and then click the plus sign. This will take you into a screen of pre-configured layouts or templates. Looking at the two boxes in the lower left corner of the screen, that first box, and that's what you see pictured there, uh, shows the photos with no borders around them. So you would have a photo that would print to the edge, to all four edges. So if you're looking to print a photo with no border, you would click that first box. If you would like your photo to have a border around it, you would click that second box in the lower left-hand corner. There you can see that layout has changed. It looks just like the screen before it. However, here you see a border now around all of those layouts or pre-configured templates. I've toggled back to that first box in the lower left-hand corner to print a photo without a border. I clicked on the 4x6 template and then clicked on that little head. That little head will bring me into my camera roll where I can locate and select the photo that I would like to print. Now you'll see that photo is there and I will click next and then click print. So we'll go about the process of starting to print that. It's important to make sure that printing progress bar completes before you cancel anything or before you go back to a prior screen. If that printing progress bar is not complete, then your photo will not print successfully. I've clicked the back button to take me to the prior screen and I'm clicking on now that second box. I'd like to print a photo with a border around it. So same four by six layout. I am going to my camera roll, searching for a photo that I would like to print, uh, selecting that photo, it brings the photo in. I will click next and then hit print. And again, uh, I wanna make sure the progress bar that photo prints. And then I am clicking back to the prior screen where we started. One of the great things about the Epson PictureMate PM400 printer is that it prints three sizes, a five by seven, a four by six, and a three and a half by five. 
Starting again from the home screen, I'm going to press the plus button to create a new layout. From there, I'm on the select layout screen and I will select the layout I'd like to work with. Once I've selected the layout I'd like to work with, I have the ability to change the size of the paper. So the layout that you see I've selected in the lower right hand corner, it tells me the size. Most often the size is defaulted from the size that you last printed. So in this case, I would like to print a five by seven instead of a four by six. The three dots in the lower left hand corner are where I really have a lot of different options to change different factors on a selected layout. I want to click those three dots. When I click those three dots, I will see a number of different options. You'll see here, I have scrolled down just a little bit to the change paper size. I want to click change paper size and that will give me three different options. Five by seven, four by six, and three and a half by five. I just need to uh, click the size, the paper size that I would like to print on, and then click back. Now that we've printed a single photo layout, we're going to change to a multiple photo layout. I have the layout I'd like to use here. It will um, support up to eight photos. So as we saw in the beginning, I click on the little head and that will take me to my camera roll. I'm just in my recent uh, photos here and I find a photo and in the box it goes. Then I click on the next box. Again, go to recents and then find another photo. So that process, uh, I would continue one by one by one. If I want to make that process go a little bit faster or streamline that process, I have the option to select multiple photos at once. And I can do that by clicking the three dots in the lower left-hand corner. Um, if I would like, I can click that select multiple photos. Uh, so I've done that here and now I can I'm on my camera roll again. I can click multiple photos. So you can see that little check mark. I am clicking multiple photos in that one session. So the process of selecting multiple photos makes it go so much quicker as opposed to a one by one. So now we have all eight photos. Once my photos are placed in a collage, I have the ability to manipulate them in a couple of different perspectives. I can click on any of the photos and move it around within its box. I can touch the screen and pinch it outward or pinch it inward to get a close up or move it further back. If I'd like to remove a photo, I can click on the photo and click the delete button. If I want to rotate a photo, I can click on the photo and click the little rotate button. If I want to replace the photo I removed, I click on the head again and go right back to the process that we learned earlier on of picking a photo in my camera roll. In the example that I showed you before, I was pulling photos from the recents a part of my camera roll. So it was easy to find the photos I was looking for. But in reality, when you're printing a photo with a collage, most likely your photos will not be all together. That is where I use albums on my phone. Using photo albums gives you the ability to group all of the photos together ahead of time that you want to pull into a collage and then use that select multiple photos option. So let's take a look at that. I have a collage layout already selected and I clicked select multiple photos. From there, it brings up the camera roll. And as I scroll through the camera roll, I am looking at all of the different albums that I have on my phone. I click one of those albums where I have grouped all of the photos together that I would like to print. You can see I am just clicking on each of those photos. This makes it so much easier, especially if you're going back years or months and trying to find all of the different photos and selecting them one by one. 
Once you have the photo selected, it's very easy to move a photo into another position by simply clicking on that photo and dragging into a new position. From there, you'd go about the process of printing your photo as we've reviewed in the past. Here we're going to look at another example of printing multiple photos on a layout or collage. So here I have selected two three by four photos. I need to change my size from five to seven to four by six, and then I collect selected select multiple photos. So I am going to one of my albums and I am looking for specific photos. So here is an album of our family snowshoeing uh, a couple of, goodness, seven years ago. I've selected both of those photos and here we have both. I can pinch that second photo to kind of crop it. And then uh, from here, I can uh, print it, right? So super simple. In this case, I could use these two photos side by side, or if I wanted, I could cut them apart and use them as smaller photos. That's another benefit of using collages like this. So here, I am going back to now the section without borders. So I want to print that same photo without borders. Um, I have picked that same side by side three by four. I am going down to that same photo album. I'm selecting both photos again, uh, and then uh, pinching this second photo and cropping it. Uh, that's a really easy way to kind of modify that photo and print it. So here, if I printed this and cut it, both of those photos would be three by four. Those are two three by fours printed on a four by six. And then I could go about, you know, cutting those and using them in a traveler's notebook or a mini book or what have you. In this next example, I would like to print three photos that are two and a half by about two and a quarter. And I don't necessarily have that as an option uh, to print something that specific size on the printer. So what I have done is selected a template where I can um, put those photos together and then print them and cut them out to use as individual small photos. I'm scrolling through my camera roll until I find a photo album that contains the three photos that I would like to select. So here I am looking at our Ireland photo album. I selected the three photos. In this case, I only want to print three photos. So I've only uh, put three photos into that layout or collage. I can move those photos into place by clicking and holding a photo and then dragging it to the spot. Once it's in that spot, I can manipulate it and kind of move the placement uh, prior to printing. And that's what you're seeing here. Once that photo is printed, I can then trim apart into three individual smaller sized photos. So that is a great way to um, be able to easily print uh, and size your small photos. Now let's dive a little deeper into those three little dots in the lower left hand corner. The first option that we're gonna take a look at when we click those three little dots is the add text. So when we click add text, uh, it will bring up a new window for us where we can type in whatever text that we would like to add as an overlay to the top of our photo. So I'm typing there. From then you can click on the little color button and choose from a variety of different colors. You can choose the font button to change the font and you can choose the alignment button. Uh, there is the text on the photo, and then I can drag that um, so it sits and will print wherever I have left it. I can add a stamp or pre-configured image by clicking on the three dots and clicking Add Stamp. I see an array of different pre-configured images that I can select and add to my photo. Once it has been added to the photo, I can click it, make it larger or smaller, and then drag it to wherever I would like it to print on the photo. Let's take a look at stamps a little bit further. So going back to this screen, I can scroll and I will have a number of different stamps or images uh, available to me. So as I scroll, here is another set. Under that same first little icon, 
uh, as I scroll again, here is another set. From there, you'll see to the right, there are some additional kind of groupings of stamps. So any of those I can click on and download into the Epson Creative Print app. So then they're available in my stamp library, if you will, in the app, and I can use them on any of my photos. In this example, I downloaded the holiday set and put those little stamps or little icons onto a five by seven template and print it out. So here I could cut them apart and use them as icons or use them in any of my projects. I can add an additional photo on top of my photo collage by again, clicking those three dots in the lower right hand corner and clicking on the add photo option. From there, it brings up my camera roll again and I can search through my camera roll until I identify the photo that I would like to sit on top or overlay uh, that existing collage. So I have selected a photo here uh, that will bring it into the photo editor and here I can crop it uh, to whatever size that I need and then rotate it if I need to rotate it and then place it on top of the photos. From there, I can pinch it, make it larger or smaller, and then also move it around anywhere on uh, that collage or in that case, I deleted it. You can change the layout of an existing collage by clicking the three buttons down below. Here I have clicked change layout. And whenever you do that, you'll see a warning um, indicating that whatever new layout you pick may cause a problem. In this case, I had started out with 12 photos and I moved to a four photo collage, so I lost eight photos. So generally, if I wanted to change the layout of something, I would just start all over again with a brand new layout. You also have the option of changing the size of the photo. So here I would click the three buttons in the lower right hand corner and I'm selecting change paper size. I see the three paper sizes. Just as we saw with the last um, example, it is giving me a warning, uh, letting me know that by changing the size, I could possibly be um, interfering with uh, the layout and kind of how things are spaced on the photo. I can also change the background by clicking on the three dots and clicking change background. I see an array of different color options. And when I select that color, you'll see how the white background is now changing uh, to a different color. You can set the color that you like and then print. Your last option is adjusting the border size. So I've clicked adjust the border side and you can see with that little slider there, I can move that back and forth to adjust the size of the border or in this case, the white space around the individual photos on my photo and then print from there. That would be another option to uh, get smaller photos if I needed by cutting them out once it had been printed. Up until this point, we've been spending most of our time in the two boxes in the lower left-hand corner. The third box is pre-designed backgrounds. When I click that box, I see a number of pre-designed backgrounds that are available for download. So I choose the background that I would like and I download. So once it's downloaded, I have that background and I follow the same process that I've been following all along by clicking on the head and adding the photo to that box. Or I also have the option there of clicking on the select multiple photos options, which I've done here. So I'm selecting multiple photos to add to that pre-designed background. There we go, and now I am ready to print or move uh, the individual photos around or what have you. If I go back to that uh, background screen and scroll to the left, I have a number of different templates uh, that I can work with, and these are invitation templates. So you have different designs where you can then go in and change the wording. So you can change, uh, in this case, this looks like it's a wedding invitation, so you can change 
uh, the name of the the names of the people getting married. You can change the dates. You can change um, the time and so forth. Going back to that original screen when you log in, you have a number of different other options that I would encourage you just to kind of play with. Uh, the first one that I've selected there is coloring book. So in coloring book, you can select a photo from your camera roll and then it will appear as an outline Then you could print out and then color in. Another option from that main screen is printing your own stationery. So when you select that stationery button, you will have a number of different options, lined papers, writing papers, or a calendar. Here I've selected lined papers. There are different lined paper options. You can then decide to uh, go ahead and print any of these if you would like. This is printing out in an A5 size. Uh, so you'd put your five by seven uh, paper, uh, in this case, uh, in the printer, and then you would go ahead and print. Another stationary option that you have is writing papers. So when you bring up writing papers, you have the option of clicking on and selecting a photo to be in the background of your stationary of your writing paper. So here I have pulled up uh, my camera roll again, and I'm selecting a photo. Now, just as we learned earlier, if you have a photo that may take you a little while to find, it might be easier to identify it ahead of time and put it in a separate folder. But here you go, I now have um, this photo. In the background, it's kind of opaque, so um, it's not as vibrant as it normally would be. And I could then uh, print this out on a piece of five by seven, paper, cardstock, what have you, and then I have a nice little decorative piece of stationery that I can use for my writing. If I click on that middle icon, you'll notice it rotates the lines, so now they're vertical. That way I could incorporate a landscape versus portrait photo and then be writing horizontally on a horizontal photo instead of a vertical photo. And then that last option gives me the ability to just have a nice background without lines. In either of those cases, or all three cases, I could um, then go ahead again and put my cardstock or my paper in and print accordingly. There are a couple of other options that I thought I'd just talk about. Uh, one under personal stationery is the ability to create and print a calendar, whether it is a monthly view or a weekly view. That's not something that I've ever used, but if that's something that you'd like to learn more about, I suggest you just kind of, you know, dig in and see what, what's there. Going back out to that home or main screen, you'll see a couple of other options, a greeting card, photo book, and design paper. Again, those are options that I have not used at all, so if that's something you're interested in learning more about, I would suggest just dig in, click on each of those options, and kind of play around and see what is available. All right, so now that we've gone through uh, the Epson Creative Print app, I thought it might be fun to take a look at a few examples of how I then use um, photos in my traveler's notebook. So uh, we'll start out, let me move all these, I've got my stack here. Uh, let's start out with this guy. Here is an example where I created a pocket, so a little pocket there, and then that is just a four by six print. But on that four by six print, I've used one of the collages that fits one, two, three, four, five, six, seven photos. So four of the photos are squares, and then those three are rectangles. So four by six photo right into a pocket. All right, another example uh, here is where I have used two uh, three by four photos. Um, actually, those are probably a little bit larger than three by four, uh, but anyhow, two photos that I printed on a five by seven and then trimmed down uh, to fit into my traveler's notebook there. Um, another example here, uh, let's come over here. We'll go with this little guy next. Uh, here, sometimes when I am printing photos like that, 
um, I want to leave an empty space so that I can decorate. So in this case, I just picked one of the pre-configured templates or collages. Uh, actually, it was the same size that we just looked at, but I did not put a photo right here because I knew I wanted to put some embellishment in that spot. So I just left that spot blank. Then I have it free to, I have it free to embellish. Uh, we do the same thing here for May. In this case, I left a couple more spaces. I left one, two, three spaces open where I did not put photos in that pre-configured template or con um, collage. So I'd be able to do a little bit more decorating. Okay, uh, here, this is another uh, one of the pre-configured templates. This was a five by seven size uh, that had one, two, three horizontal photos. So I used that as one piece but again, if you were looking for um, a single photo, I could just um, either put all of those um, into the collage uh, and then print it out and then cut each of those apart separately and use them separately. Uh, or I suppose if I wanted, I could just print one out and then have, you know, white space for whatever. All right, another example. This is an example of a collage that actually was on a five by seven that was three across and four down. So what I did here, I just had my photos printed in the first two columns. This column was left blank. Uh, so then that way I could uh, just have a narrower uh, photo, if you will. So lots of different options that you can, uh, lots of different options that you can work with. There is another, um, one of those, five by seven templates that had one, two, three, four large photos followed by six smaller photos. All right, I'm going to move to this one now. This is one of my favorite techniques to do uh, with the five by seven in one of those uh, collages. So this little guy was a five by seven, three across, four down. I printed it out as a single five by seven and then just used my trimmer to separate each of those columns of photos. And now I have kind of made my own little photo booth strips. And then in that case, tuck those into a pocket. So I think that's always fun. Another thing that I could do with these, and it's actually uh, what I did here, um, I printed out something similar, a, um, a long strip, and then trimmed apart those photos to fit inside of that little film strip. So. Uh, using the app and using some of those pre-configured templates or collages, like we talked about, you can actually print single photos and then trim in between each of the photos on your little collage or on your template. All right, um, one of the examples that I showed uh, was taking three photos. I had printed three photos on a five by seven and those three photos were here, here, and here. And then I cut those into individual photos. So this would be an example of how I've used that. Cut them into individual photos and then did some journaling and add a little bit of decoration uh, around that um, around that spread. So uh, that is um, where you see I've done my writing. That is part of the Traveler's Notebook insert. So just trimmed out the photos and um, adhered each of those separately to my spread. Uh, last one I will show you, um, and actually kind of have two examples here. Here is just an example of a smaller photo being used. But then again, over here, that is basically creating one of those film strips, just like we looked at here. But in this case, I only used uh, one of those film strips uh, in my spread here. So those are just some examples of the many different ways that I've used photos in my traveler's notebooks uh, that I've printed from that Epson uh, creative print app using the Epson PictureMate PM400 printer. As a reminder, in the description box of the video down below, I have included a link to purchase that printer uh, from Amazon. That is an affiliate link. So if you purchase through that link, um, my link, then I do get a little kickback, um, but it does not affect your price that you pay uh, at all. That's something that Amazon does on the back end. So I hope, hope, hope you enjoy um, learning how to use that Epson Creative Print app. There are so many possibilities of what you can do with that. Uh, if you have any questions about how to use the app that I haven't covered, um, you, can, you can reach out, uh, but chances are, I may not know the answer to your question. So I've just kind of given you an overview of how um, I've kind of worked my way through the app and some of the different tips, tricks, and techniques that I have found to make my workflow um, a little bit easier and go a little bit more smoothly as I'm printing photos. Thanks for watching today. Bye-bye.